thanks, Ken, for joining us today. And I'm excited for our audience to get to learn from you because, of course, you have been, I'm not going to date you, but you've been in sales a very long time and actually coaching some of the best in the sales field. And in that coaching process, you figured out how to help people get through their learning curve quicker so that they can put their skills to use and get the payback right away. And also you help people get a whole lot smarter, faster about what specifically they should be learning about their customers to make effective sales calls. So I'll let you be the guide on what you want to dive into first. Well, thank you, and I'm glad you didn't date me, but we're, uh, we've are we had the experience of seeing what works and what hasn't worked. We do two types of things in, in that area, at least, to get, kind of get the salespeople thinking about how to be smarter. First of all, it's certainly important to go to LinkedIn and check out the person you're talking to, uh, because you want them to know that you spent the time doing research on them. Uh, and so when they see that you've been on their site, uh, and you'll be able to find out issues. I recently made a call on a large company and found out that a couple of people I talked to uh, went to college in Minneapolis, St. Paul. In reality, they were living out in Silicon Valley. Uh-huh. So it was an important element to touch base and discuss that. And we got somewhat of a close relationship simply because of that little common denominator. Gotcha. Now, beyond that, we also do something called the, we call it the Acumen Power Network. Uh, what we do is we we take a look at uh, 10 of your best customers and we Google stock them or uh, LinkedIn stock them and we actually build a map around the person who is one of our top 10 customers of what organizations they belong to, what uh, associations they attend, uh, what social things they may do from Facebook or LinkedIn or just Google or other other social medias. And we map those out on a sheet of paper. So we have a picture of the person and all their associations and organizations linked around them. So when we are about to talk to someone new, uh, we also do a, a quick uh, power network map around that person and find out if any of my 10 best customers are somehow linked to this suspect that I'm working with or prospect that I'm working with. So that's an important element of being able to figure out how do I bond? How do I do a referral? How do I get introduced to that person? It's a really good idea. The third element that we really uh, recommend, Mary, is really something we, we talk about closely is certainly you, you want to go to their website and read their press releases. You want to understand what's going on, but you need to understand their value proposition. Mm-hmm. And you need to understand why customers do business with them. Uh, And so one of the real things that we like to suggest is that you need to understand who the customer is and why the customer does business with your prospect. So once you understand the customer focus of your prospect, you'll understand, depending on what you're selling and servicing to these people, how to drive your opportunity to closure because you're going to be referring and understanding their business proposition. You know, this is beneficial on so many levels because I've seen um, company sales reps that are pretty myopic because, of course, your whole day is focused on the product or solution that you sell. And so you assume everyone else is thinking about that all day long, too. And as soon as you jump into what is your customer thinking about all day that they're trying to deliver to their customers and how, you know, how do are they trying to become more important to that customer? It breaks you out of the fact that, you know, your product isn't necessarily the most important thing on their mind for that day, but helping their customer is. So how do you relanguage or take a new approach so that you're relevant that way? Yeah, I think if you, you're speaking on their terms, it's critical. And, that, and that's the, the next area that it's really critical to accelerate into, into the sales area and to learn more is to understand that the person you're speaking to may have different values, value propositions, business needs than the person they report to. So if you're not talking to the, if you're talking to the CEO, <clears throat> you certainly have to know what her or his issues are as a CEO. If you're talking to someone in a lower position, they may have totally different needs, business wants, or issues, their challenges that they face. So your messaging, both on a day-to-day sales call or in your emails, your proposals, have to change based upon your audience. 
And that's part of also understanding the people and who they fit. Right. Well, that's so smart because you can still look at their different functional level from the viewpoint of what are they trying to accomplish for their customers. And of course, that changes throughout the organization, depending on the job role. Exactly. And, and that's why messaging and selling is really interesting to understand, you know, how to accelerate into that role. Right, exactly. So what if, Ken, you're working with somebody that said, I would love to sit and stalk my best customers, but I don't have a lot of time left during my day if I'm planning to eat or sleep at all. So how do I expedite it so that I can be as smart as I need to be, but not have it take all day? Well, it, depending upon the level uh, of the person you're calling on, the price point uh, that you're trying to sell to uh, and who who you uh, what message you need to deliver it may be worth the investment not to sleep a little <laughs> good uh, point good point but uh, it's important that at at best that you spend the time to make sure they know that you've taken the time to get to know them so dropping the fact that you've read their latest three press releases you understand something about the regulatory issue that faces them. Uh, you understand, and they know that you've been on your their LinkedIn site if they are there, um, and you spent the time to look at that issue. Become critical elements in order to make sure that happens. So all of that becomes real important in figuring out uh, how to stand out in the marketplace, and that's the critical component. And you know, I've actually heard about services that help the Bill Gates of the world, for example, do you know the friendly stalking, not of course in a bad way, but really for pe the relationships that are most important in your business. You know, mm -hmm. there's firms that will actually keep up on their family, and is there a major celebration or possibly a death in the family, and do you want to send out a greeting card, and you know, really to build that ongoing relationship you know, showing that you're paying attention to their life and that you care about them and they matter. That's the important element that, again, depending upon your price point, your speed of your transaction, you know, are you a six month transaction? Are you a two day transaction? You have different levels of need to, to do the personalization. And I think it's critical that you spend time doing that. But that's why accelerated learning is so important is that you've got to be able to learn what resources are available and what you can do to maximize your time. Because standing out in the marketplace today is the number one challenge. Um, you know, having your own company value proposition uh, that's unique is very important. But as a salesperson, how are you making the difference? How are you really being the person that someone trusts, that they like, that they listen to? You know, those are all critical aspects of what you, you have to do in today's world. So, Ken, when you think of a client that has just knocked your socks off in terms of how sharp they are at really um, educating themselves, taking that deep dive into understanding their customers and what they're trying to accomplish in their marketplace, what's an example of someone that you have just seen really do it effectively? Oh, great question. Um, I, I've seen so many not. <laughs> <laughs> I can name that one either, but I, I can think of one company. That, that, that's called job security. There you go. Exactly right. Um, because, I mean, it's amazing. Some people just are on autopilot, and they just kind of go through the process. Uh, one client that was amazing is that they actually purchased um, the premium membership on LinkedIn. Um, and every salesperson had a common LinkedIn profile, which I don't see a lot. Um, and they were they did an enormous amount of focus between the sales manager and the people on pre-call planning. Um, we actually, as a result of that, created uh, with them a pre-call planning document that we use a lot now. But it it was really kind of tribal in that they kind of knew what they wanted to do, but we formalized it for them. But they were very heavy into, oh, is this person you know been quoted in a magazine? Is this person? Uh, been you know uh, noted for anything in, in any area so they could go to the ego side of the issue mm -hmm. but they also then made sure that before and when the emails they sent or the letters they sent or the phone calls they went they ensured that they dropped one or two nuggets about their company or about their industry and I thought they they were just well done that way because of they had the discipline and the sales manager 
was driving that discipline into them on a, a daily basis about what are the two nuggets you're dropping? What are you saying about this? What do you know about the person? You know, what have they have done lately? What's, what are the challenges facing their industry? Uh, you know, what are the regulatory issues going on? So they really focused on pre-call planning dramatically, and that caused um, their credibility to instantly be hit right there. I mean, the people didn't hear other salespeople talking about those kinds of elements. That is so wonderful to bring up because you had mentioned that we need to have a why for our learning, especially as adults, and that really gives the purpose to the research. So it's not just, you know, research ad nauseum, like reading a newspaper and not really having an end in mind, but you have basically your pre-call planning checklist and find out as much of these, you know, details as you possibly can. And then here's how you're going to use that information. So it seems like just a really smart way to approach your prospect learning. Yeah, it's, it's logical. Uh, but without reinforcement, without discipline, uh, accountability and control, sometimes somebody's going to get lazy and they'll kind of wing it. Uh, and that's where salespeople get either a bad name bad reputation, or you lose the odds of developing the right relationship with the right individual. Uh, and, and today, the relationship is, is very important, uh, as always, but it's critical that you take the time to say, before I make this, I, I need to make this an A call, and I need to make sure I'm on top of my game, because if I'm not, somebody else is going, going to be, and you're not going to be able to score when you need to score. Right. So, Ken, do you deal with any clients that are saying, yeah, that sounds great, except my management expects me to make 50 calls a day and there's no way that I can get up to speed on each individual that I'm going to talk to. How do you get clients to be willing to maybe sacrifice some of the call volume to make smarter calls? Well, it, again, it goes back to uh, transaction size, transaction velocity, and some of those elements. Um, but Generally, in those worlds, uh, if they're supposed to make 50 calls a day, two things are happening. They're, they're leaving 45 voicemails, uh, and the voicemail is not tailored enough or not personalized enough, so the person's not listening to it. So I really talk about two options. Um, find one element that you can drop that's going to be personalized enough for this person and or drop to, I'm going to make up a number of 30 calls a day um, and make sure you've got a higher quality of contact versus quantity of contact. Uh, I was just talking to a person today outside of Philadelphia who's just having – the business is in real trouble. Um, and he was talking about what they're doing, and it's chaos. <laughs> and there's no, no process involved. There's no program involved. Uh, there's no reason for people to leave voicemail. He's – trying to get his people to make 100 calls a day because he's desperate. I'm going, they're not going to do it, and they're going to be poor quality. Yeah. So I'm a big believer in quality versus quantity. Yeah, so at better, that point, better, you may as well better, use a recording, right? The better the target you have and the better quality of how you leave that message is critical. And it goes back to the role play. If you're doing 35 calls a day or 50 calls a day uh, or 10 calls a day, make sure that you have called yourself and left that voicemail so you can hear how you sound and if you sound excited enough for someone to talk to. Brilliant advice. Brilliant advice. Thank you, Ken. Do you have any last advice to help our audience do a smarter job of learning what they need to do to make every sales call more effective? I think um, off the top of my head, I would say invest. And I, you, know, you don't have to invest a lot of money these days because of ebooks and uh, videos or all those kinds of elements that are available online. But make sure that as a professional, that you make a commitment to do what amateurs don't. And that is do the extra work that's going to elevate yourself to that next level. Amateurs will wing it, professionals will be planned, they'll invest in themselves and read two or three books a year. Uh, on how to improve your business. It's easy, uh, it's simple, um, and it pays off. Brilliant advice. Thanks so much, Ken. Sales Mastery is your resource to make it easy to accelerate your sales learning. 
make sure to connect. Find out about new interviews first by subscribing to our YouTube channel right here. And get more resources to help you master selling by clicking here. I wish you the best of success.